Assalamu alaikum. Today we will talk about uh, the metallic and the non-metallic properties of elements in the periodic table. So first in the 19th century, a scientist called Berzelius, that guy, he managed to divide the elements into metals and non-metals. And although this is some kind of an old classification for elements, but we still study this classification because it's still working and elements can really be classified into metals and non-metals and there's a third group which have uh, some properties of metals and non-metals which is called metalloids. So at the time of Berzelius, the differences between metals and non-metals were not clear enough as nowadays due to the development and the advancement in the science of chemistry. So now we will know the differences between metals, non-metals and metalloids and how are they classified in the periodic table. So first, metals. Metals are characterized that their outermost energy level carries less than half of the capacity of that energy level. And we shall take a note that we are talking about the energy level or the energy shell, not an energy sublevel. For example, if the atom's outermost energy level is the second energy level. So if the atom is the atom of a metal, it shall carry one, two, or three electrons. Because half the capacity is four, and the maximum number of electrons is eight. So we have one electrons, two electrons, three electrons. This is less than the half. And we are talking about the second energy level. Because the maximum capacity of the second energy level is carrying only 8 electrons. So this is the first property of metals. And based on that fact, the metals always lose these electrons so that they can reach the nearest structure of the uh, nearest noble gas to reach stability. And as they lose electrons, they are considered electro-positive. So they are always converted into positive ions, because they give electrons to other uh, atoms. They lose electrons. So they always convert into cations. This property of being electropositive, so that the metals easily lose their valency electrons, uh, metals are considered as electric conducting elements. They conduct electricity easily because the valency electrons can move easily from one part to another in the metallic structure of the um, metal. And finally, the atomic radius of metals is large. So this means that the outermost electrons of the atoms of metals are far from the nucleus. And so this leads to less ionization energy and less um, electro affinity. So these are the properties of metals. Now we'll talk about non-metals. Simply, non-metals are the opposite of metals. So the non-metals and their outermost energy levels, the outermost energy level carries more than half of the capacity of this energy level. So as an example, as we uh, said in metals, the second energy level. If there was an atom, 
and this outermost energy level is the second energy level and this atom is an atom of a non-metal so we have half of the capacity is four electrons so in the non-metal the second energy level as an outermost energy level can carry five six or seven electrons now the maximum capability of the second energy level is carrying eight electrons but if the second energy level carries eight electrons it will be completely filled and this will be an atom of a noble gas so this is the first property of nonmetals second as nonmetals always have more than half of the capacity of the outermost energy level they always tend to take electrons so that they can complete this energy level to reach stability this is the opposite of metals metals lose the first uh, electrons which are less than half so that they can reach stability while met non-metals complete the outermost energy level to reach stability and that's why they are considered electronegative because they are always converted into negative ions or anions. So as nonmetals being electronegative, this is the property which leads to the fact that nonmetals are bad conductors of electricity because they cannot lose uh, their valency electrons, instead they gain electrons. And so nonmetals are bad conductors of uh, electricity they are always insulators and non-conducting materials finally uh, the nonmetals atomic radius as the opposite of metals the nonmetals atomic radius is small and this means that the outermost electrons are near to the nucleus and this means that the attraction force between the nucleus and the outermost electrons is high and this leads to a high ionization potential and a high electron affinity. So this is the difference between metals and nonmetals. Now there are some elements which have some properties of metals like uh, their metallic cluster and most of the structural uh, properties of nonmetals. So they are called metalloids, and we'll talk about them now. So, as we have mentioned, that metalloids have some characteristics of metals and others of nonmetals. So, in metals, the outermost energy level carry less than half of the capacity of electrons of this energy level. And on the other hand, in nonmetals, the outermost energy level carries more than half of the capacity. In metalloids, it's nearly half filled. So if the second energy level is the outermost energy level in an atom, and this atom is supposed to be an atom of a metalloid, so it should carry four electrons because this is half of the capacity of the second energy level as the maximum energy level's capacity here is 8. So this is the first property. Second is that electronegativity of metalloids is between metals and nonmetals. Third, the electrical conductivity of metalloids is less than metals but at the same time it's still higher than nonmetals. And finally, metalloids are known for being used in uh, electric industry so that they are used as semiconductors and transistors. So this is for the metalloids. Now, Let's see the position of metals, nonmetals, and metalloids in the periodic table, and how can we understand the properties of the three groups from the periodic table. So, as we can see in this image, 
These are the metals, non-metals, and metalloids, showing their positions in the periodic table. Now, metals are found in green, non-metals are found in some kind of orange, and metalloids are found in between in pale blue. So, we can see here that metals are found before the non-metals in horizontal periods. And this illustrates the fact that as we know, as we move from left to right in the periodic table, the atomic radius decreases. And so, metals always have higher atomic radius than non-metals. And this is the reason why the ionization potential and the electron affinity of metals is less than the non-metals, because they are found before them in horizontal periods in the periodic table. So, as we go from left to right, we have the highest metallic property on the first group on our left hand and the highest non-metallic property in group 7. Now this is the first point. The second point is the groups. As we go down the group, we know that the, the atomic radius increases. So in metals, when we go down the group, the atomic radius increases and this enhances the metallic property. It increases the metallic property because metals are considered to be having a low ionization potential and a low electron affinity. So when the atomic radius increases, this is achieved more. And that's why the, the elements with the highest metallic property are found in the left bottom corner of this image. So Cesium is considered to be the most element with the highest metallic property. On the other hand, in the nonmetals, the most element with the highest nonmetallic property is on the right upper corner. It's fluorine. Because if we take the group 7 and we go down the group, the atomic radius will increase. And as the atomic radius increases, the uh, ionization potential and the electron affinity will decrease. And this is not what nonmetals are considered to be having. They are considered to have a high electron affinity and a high ionization potential. So the most value of this is achieved only in fluoride. Because it has the lowest atomic radius or the smallest atomic radius. So this is it for today. Now we know the metallic and the non-metallic property and we know also the metalloids. So the next time we will talk about the acidic and the basic properties of elements in the periodic table. And until then, I thank you for watching and see you. Assalamu alaikum.